We all remember our, you know, scene phase. Uh, we all remember our, you know, emo phase. You know, we remember MySpace. We remember the 2010s. All those, you know, lovely moments. In fact, we remember them so much that the current generation uh, uh, idolizes it and they try to like replicate it. They try to have their own emo phase. They try to have their own scene phase. They, you know, try to bring those styles back. They try to bring that, that culture back, but there are just some aspects of that culture that you can't replicate because there were some awful things that some people weren't even aware existed and they changed the world. Netflix uh, decided to uh, sponsor, you know, a uh, documentary uh, centering on a website that was monumental to um, how the world views the internet and how the world views crimes that are done on the internet. Now, how the world views what kind of crimes can happen on the internet? What kind of like ways someone can invade your privacy? Someone can like uh, uh, exploit other people's content and exploit other people's existence. You know what I mean? Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I am talking about a documentary called The Most Hated Man on the Internet. And uh, it centers on the website isanyoneup.com. Now, um, me personally, I remember uh, that website. I remember, you know, when that website was, was going around. I remember, you know, it, it, it's rain. Um, everything is in. Well, OK, not everything, but uh, a lot of things that are in this documentary were very familiar. You know, I, I existed during that time and, you know, none of this was foreign to me. But um, to anyone who wasn't really big into the MySpace scene, to anyone who wasn't big into being like a scene kid going out to, you know, the, the raves or, you know, shows for bands like Fall Out Boy or uh, even more hardcore bands like, you know, like Pig Destroyer or you know, the, 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 that band that Jamie Jostin was in, Hatebreed? Hatebreed. You know, you know, shit like that, right? If you weren't into that scene, you, you didn't really know too much about this website. The one thing to note going into this is that this is a website that uh, changed the way uh, the world viewed uh, the concept of revenge porn and uh, it forced this concept into the mainstream so that uh, laws could be put into place uh, in the future that would uh, protect people from you know revenge porn because um, one spoiler I will give is that the only reason the man in this documentary uh, uh, like faces any sort of like legal ramifications is not because of the uh, uh, the concept of the website, but because he fucked up and actually did something that was just completely <laughs> illegal. Regardless, he he was involved in a scheme that you know uh, had people's like uh, uh, accounts hacked in a certain way. You know, uh, I'm not going to spoil like how I'm not going to spoil, you know, like those details, because um, I will say right off the bat, if you're very interested in the, uh, that website or anything that happened in the early 2010s, you know, anything about the culture of um, like the alternative scene during the uh, like early 2010s. Um, this documentary is worth it, and uh, it has all kinds of twists and turns. I mean, like, holy shit. <laughs> There's a part in the documentary that is my absolute favorite. Um, they start off by centering on a girl who, um, she, you know, took a, uh, a topless photo of herself, and uh, she didn't have space on her phone, so she emailed it to herself so that she could, you know, find somewhere, you know, to, to store it later, uh, uh, rather than her phone. And somehow it ended up on isanyoneup.com, which is a website where people would post nudes of random people. Like, you, you can anonymously, like, upload nudes of yourself, nudes of uh, other people, and this website just straight up docks them. Like, they would post their, their Facebook, they would post their a uh, address in some cases, like, you know, uh, of course, it gained more notoriety when, like, you know, celebrities uh, ended up on their content. Uh, well, 
the, the concept of content creator wasn't really a thing back then, but like, you know, well-known figures on like, you know, MySpace or uh, television shows, things like that. Those people were uh, posted on this website, you know, members of bands who knew uh, the man in question. Uh, all those people ended up on the website. So this girl, um, you know, was devastated about this, didn't know what to do, told her mom. Her mom was very, very dedicated to, to like, rectifying this situation. That woman had, honestly, she had extreme care and energy, but she was channeling it for good. You know, she would not stop until justice was served in this case. And that was, you know, they, they, you'll see the documentary. Like, like it, it, it's interesting stuff when they uh, reveal shit like that. But, um, she had a stepdad who was a uh, very, very British man. I mean, very British man who he didn't want to be involved. Uh, you know, because in his brain, it was, like, he didn't really understand the concept of the internet, and that was more common back then, so people who didn't understand the internet didn't understand the severity of having uh, uh, nude photos of yourself or, like, compromising photos of yourself posted on a website, uh, because they're, you know, it's there for good. It's going to ruin your life, in, uh, uh, in a sense, because, you know, your reputation is just ruined, right? So this dude um, finally got presented with uh enough like evidence to really like see that this was a serious situation and he said this i thought okay that's pretty that's that's the case isn't it that's a case for war and i realized at that moment that i had been slow to act and it was time for me to take action as an attorney without any further delay. And it, it brought chills down my spine because it was so fuck, it was so good. Um, unfortunately, like later in the documentary, uh, he doesn't have more moments like this, but whatever. Uh, they, they leave room for other people and it's interesting. Now, um, if you don't know about this man, this, this, this terrible dude, um, Hunter Moore was, uh, for all intents and purposes, an egomaniac who uh, gained fame off of being like a DJ and like uh, I think like MySpace also lent lent him some um, notoriety. Uh, like the, he gained some fame and then he started this website and this website allowed like trolls, incels, like all all those like dregs um, to talk shit. Uh, about, you know, people that they had problems with, people who they, they didn't like, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It allowed them to do all that anonymously, which we know now. Any situation that allows them to do that uh, allows people to be their worst form. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, that's why most people don't read YouTube comments or are advised not to read YouTube comments because, you know, you have people who just uh, probably haven't left their home in, like, I don't know, four months or something and, like, don't know what the outside world is like or what humans are like, you know what I mean? Um, so he gained this following and like it boosted his ego more and more and he felt invincible and so this documentary shows uh what he was doing with that fame and how he was just like such a sick in individual and me personally i'm glad that this is out because now i can tell every single person that um any like uh, any scene, emo, uh, 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 hippie, like any kind of like alternative girl, uh, uh, actually alternative person, like their shitty ex-boyfriend is this guy. Like, like th th this guy is the embodiment of that human being. Like, the, the, usually looks like this guy, usually acts like this guy, usually has all the telltale signs that he's like, you know, uh, an, an evil narcissist who uh, uh, only cares about gaining more and more followers to gain more and more power to feel like nothing can uh, take him down. You know what I mean? Um, uh, to keep it simple, 
this whole thing was worth it. Like, the, it was three episodes. Um, I believe it's like the first episode is like 50 minutes. A second episode is like an hour and change. Third episode is like an, uh, 45 minutes to an hour. You know, um, I got through it pretty quickly, to be honest. Like, it, it, it felt like a breeze um, after I started it. Um, and it was all like it never really had a moment where it didn't feel like it was getting boring or like you know there were like lulls in the story that were just kind of like not important every single aspect that was introduced was important every single person that was introduced was uh important it even showed like what happened to a lot of these uh, uh, people? Well, what happened to a lot of these women who were like involved with this website, involved with the scene, like, you know, uh, uh, what they look like now, you know, now that they've grown up, because we, we, a lot of us look back on that, uh, on that time and think, why did I do this? Also, um, there is, <laughs> there is a, person who went by the name of butthole girl that is involved in this and you can guess what this is in reference to but like you you probably won't you probably won't understand it unless you remember seeing this person on the internet uh because this is from the era where people were you know, like, like shock sites were, were like, you know, popular and shit, like, like, uh, uh, like meat spin and, uh, you know, videos like Mr. Han, uh, you know, famously two girls, one cup, which was uploaded to YouTube somehow. Um, you know, that kind of stuff was going around and is anyone up was like a website that allowed people to do that kind of thing. Uh, they even, uh, at one point cover the fact that like, <sighs> Censorship is important <laughs> because if you let people run wild on the internet, they're going to find the, the worst possible things they can and like add them to this website. You know, uh, there was CP involved. There was, you know, uh, gore. There was, you know, all the like awful words that you're not supposed to say in a YouTube video. Uh, they were included in this website and they had to be like filtered somehow. And uh, apparently they weren't, they weren't filtered very well. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, if you have Netflix or if you uh, have a person who has a Netflix account that you want that you are spending some time with, you should watch this documentary. Um, it's very, uh, very informative, very interesting. Um, the lives of the people involved are really just amazing. Um, you even get to see uh, the circumstance from the perspective of someone who is in a relationship with this man who was actively like terrorizing people who were pleading to him to say like, hey, like, this is going to ruin my life. And he laughed. He laughed. <laughs> he was shitty. Uh, the most hated man on the Internet. It's worth it. Watch it.